Before BMW made ugly cars with big grills, they did some interesting stuff, so let me tell you about the time they jammed a secret 6.7 liter V16 engine inside of an E32 7 Series. This story begins in 1987, when there were discussions among BMW's engine development team about the possibility of creating a larger engine for the E32 7 Series. At the time, BMW had only been producing the car for about a year, with its largest available engine being the M70 V12 and the flagship 750i. However, to some, a V12 wasn't big enough. The head of BMW's powertrain development, Dr. Karl-Heinz Langa, had a vision of creating a V16 for this new car. With his influential position, he got two of his colleagues involved, Hans-Peter Weisbarth and Adolf Fischer, in order to make it happen. Now, Weisbarth and Fischer were both respected employees at BMW. Weisbarth was the project leader for the E31 8 series, and more importantly, the E32 7 series, which was later chosen to be the testbed car for this prototype engine. Fischer was a development engineer for power units at BMW. Out of the three people, he's arguably the most interesting because he had a very specialized job. Fisher has been described as, quote, virtually a one-man department at BMW, where he created all sorts of interesting concepts with whatever crazy ideas popped into his head. Although only a few of Fisher's creations reached official production, I still can't think of a better job for an engineer than to essentially be given free reign to build whatever you want. On July 8, 1987, Dr. Langa, who previously asked Fisher to design the M70 engine, approached him again. This time, he asked Fisher to explore the technical possibilities over the existing V12. In response, Fisher said, There were no promises of production, but I was pleased to be able to develop a supreme BMW anyway. In fact, Fisher was so pleased that he told him at the time, the engine will be under the Christmas tree. And under the Christmas tree it was. The V16 prototype was run on the dyno on December 24th, 1987, just before Christmas Day. Now after the V16 prototype engine was complete, they needed a car to put it in. And nothing stood out more than the E32 750i. This also explains how the Goldfish got its name. Weisbarth recalled that the 7 series we used was gold in color, and so while we were discussing aspects of the project with Dr. Reitzel, he simply christened it Goldfish, and the name has gone into BMW folklore. Now some of you might wonder, how did that massive 6.7 liter V16 engine fit into an engine bay that was designed for a V12? Well, the short answer is it didn't. The engine bay was already crowded, but they didn't let that stop them. They quickly came up with a solution by moving the entire cooling system of the car into the rear, which is why the rear side panels of the re-engined E32 has gills like a fit. Like a goldfish. The new placement of the cooling systems also meant they had to use two smaller radiators rather than one large one, which both needed cooling fans to assist in case of things got too hot. The trunk also required special ventilation between the taillights to allow air to escape, which gives an interesting look to the rear of the car. With all said and done, in May 1988, the prototype was complete and the Goldfish V16 was born. The design of the engine was fairly straightforward. Without trying to oversimplify it, it was basically an extension of the existing M70. The engine block was casted with the same high silicon aluminum used in the V12 and maintained the same 84 by 75 mm cylinder bore and stroke as before. The extra cylinders meant the displacement increased from roughly 5 liters to 6.7 liters, therefore upping the power. The Goldfish V16 put out a max of 408 brake horsepower and 461 pound feet of torque, where the V12 only put out 300 brake horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. Despite the new engine having four more cylinders, the weight only increased about 60 kilograms up to 310 kilograms total, which isn't too bad all things considered. The new V16 engine also featured a different engine management system, where the V12 used two Bosch DME 1.2 units that treated the engine like two inline sixes, the V16 used the upgraded Bosch DME 3.3 units that instead treated the engine like two inline eights. Another difference from the 750i was that the Goldfish V16 used a six-speed manual transmission mission instead of the 4-speed automatic that came in the 750. Apparently, there were no other reasons for this other than the lower cost and availability of the manual. However, Fisher claimed, certainly the 6-speed manual allowed us to better explore the characteristics of the engine. We can take a pretty good guess at what that means. He also commented on the glorious sound of the engine at 4500 RPM, which unfortunately we can only take his word for. For being an absolute boat of a car, the Goldfish had pretty good performance. Of course, if you slap a V16 into most vehicles, this would probably be expected. The car managed a 6 second 0 to 62 mile per hour sprint, which is very quick for the late 80s and with a car of that size. Flat out, the car had a top speed of over 175 miles per hour, but it likely would have been limited to 155 if the car reached production because that's just what BMW does. In the end, Fisher and Weisbarth claimed that the engine was fully developed and production ready, but the BMW board decided against it. At this point in the video, the few of you who remain watching are likely wondering, well why wasn't it put into production? 
Well, luckily for you, I thought about that too. To begin, the fuel economy wasn't great, but that's expected given it's a V16. The car got roughly 14 MPG in the city, 20 MPG on the highway, and it dropped to about 12 MPG on the Autobahn, going about 120 miles per hour. Honestly, that's better than what our 2006 Toyota Land Cruiser gets, so that really doesn't sound that bad. Secondly, BMW didn't want to create an arms race with other manufacturers. There was a concern that putting a V16 into production might inspire competitors to do the same. Other things I've thought about were the brand cannibalization over the existing V12. Now this is not confirmed, but rather my own speculation. Either way, it leaves us pondering about what the BMW 767i could have been. Currently, the car sits in BMW Group's Classic Museum as a piece of automotive history. Although this engine was never put into production, I believe it speaks to the technical prowess, dedication, and talent of Fisher to be able to put this thing together in only six months. The ability to go from an idea to a working prototype for such a complex piece of engineering is truly an incredible thing and a story worth telling for decades to come. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this incredible engine and what you thought of the video. Until next time, goodbye.